Hey everyone, this is Bathymetrics. Welcome to episode six of Grid School for Bitwig 3.0. Before I start, remember that every episode in this series builds upon concepts and techniques that I've explained in detail in the earlier episodes of the series. So if you're just dropping in now and you feel like I'm not explaining certain things very well, chances are good I explained them earlier in these other videos. So I would recommend if you haven't watched this series from start to finish, you go find my Grid School playlist and work your way through from the beginning. And that'll help you understand everything I'm saying in this video a little bit better. You can find a link to this playlist in the description for every video. So today we're gonna be talking about mixing basics. There are some slightly more advanced mixing concepts and techniques that I'm gonna talk about in episode 10. Um, and I'm doing that because I'm gonna to have to build on some earlier knowledge about logics, logic and logic testing in order to do this more advanced type of mixing. So today we're just gonna talk about the basics of mixing and they're pretty simple. So this should be a fast video. Uh, in the mix category, we have some obvious looking mixing modules that look familiar to everyone. Uh, and then we have some more esoteric looking ones like this select and toggle and merge and split. These we're gonna have to talk about in that other episode I pointed out a little bit down the road because to use these, we're gonna have to understand a little bit about logic. Uh, there's also a fairly simple, um, a fairly simple type of mixing that's very common to us in audio, which has to do with taking a stereo signal that's coming in, splitting it into its left, right, mid, or side components, maybe modifying what's happening to each of those components, and then putting it all back together on the other side to come out stereo again. Uh, and then finally, here's our typical stereo width control, like you see in Tool. This is just affecting the mid-side balance of a signal. So let's see some of these in action. Um, it's easiest to do if I use two different oscillators. So we'll take a pulse oscillator and a triangle oscillator. And it's like, well, I've got two oscillators and I wanna run them side by side, but how do I run them side by side? I mean, we've learned from previous videos, you can only have one thing connected to an input port. So if I try to connect the pulse oscillator up to the envelope, well, it gets rid of my triangle oscillator. So what the hell do I do? Well, two ways you can do that is using the blend module. And let's rehook this to the lower one so it's more clear. And now I can do a all triangle coming in the top to an all pulse coming in the bottom for a blend. Right, so that's one simple type of mixer, but it only takes two signals and blends them to some degree. So the next type of mixer that's more useful, we're gonna, hey, drop you on there. Oh, really? Okay, that's new. Usually you can drop uh, one module right on top of another. That's odd. Okay, so the mixer um, starts out with just one input port like this, but you see this little hidden dark port here? As you connect more things to it, it just automatically expands. And if I were to grab a different oscillator, like a sine wave, and we'll just stick it over here so it fits, and uh, drag this one in and drop it. See, we can have this mixer that we build up with independent control over the level and the left or right balance, the pan, if you will. And um, also you can toggle certain channels off or you can solo certain channels. So this is like a little mixer. It's a full on mixer. And so this should be pretty obvious. I'm not gonna detail this or explain this. Um, let's delete that and look at the left right gain. Now this one's a little different. I'm gonna actually drag in a mixer again and show you the difference between these two because this gets a little bit esoteric. Um, let's do it like this. Let's take this into here 
And let's take this into here. Hey, stop that. As I muttered myself, sorry about that. All right, so what's going on here? This is a pure stereo signal. And in fact, let me recolor this so that it's just easier to distinguish these two. This pulse wave, we're just saying, give me whatever stereo output comes out of pulse wave, send it into the mixer, and then blend it with the other things in the mixer and forward it on. This one here, we're saying, well, wait a minute, take that stereo signal and let's give ourselves some independent control over exactly how strong the left signal is versus how strong the right signal is. And you may wonder why? Why would I do that when I have a pan control? I mean, doesn't this affect how strong the left is versus the right, depending on where I wiggle this? Well, yes and no, it kind of boils down to the reason we also have a device in Bitwig called, where are you? Where are you, where are you, where are you? Stereo pan, stereo pan. Let me just search for pan. Dual pan, that's what it's called. So Bitwig has a device called dual pan, which is effectively kind of sort of the same thing as this LR gain module. The basic idea behind dual pan is, is when you use a regular pan knob in a mixer, it's not really pan. The signal goes, has a phase on the left and a phase on the right. And it's the difference in those phase that makes a sound sound wide and stereo because there's differences in what you're hearing on your left side versus your right side. And when you use a regular pan knob, which is really a balance knob, you're just saying, well, don't change the position of those two left and right signals. Leave them out at the extreme left and the extreme right. And just let me make the, the one on the left a little quieter and the one on the right a little bit louder, okay? But when you use dual pan, you can say, hey, this signal on the left, I actually want you to like not just reduce it on the left, but also start pushing that phase over into the right channel or vice versa with the right channel. And so you may know why you would want to do that or why you wouldn't want to do that. I'll leave that up to you. But the point is that's what this LR gain is doing is it's basically that kind of control that can let you push the signal from where it normally sits all the way at the extreme right of the sides and instead say, no, 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 take that thing and push it over towards the left and let's get some actual phasing going on on the left side. And you know the, the exact percentage and proportion you do here can make some interesting results. So that's what this one's about. Um, and then the last two that are useful to us in this video are the splitters. So again, let's say I want to take the output of this triangle and I want to split it. And then I want to put it back together on the other side. So I'm saying take this output and all I want is the left channel. I don't want anything else. And I'm going to do something on that left channel like, I don't know, let's, uh, let's, uh, what's a fun thing to do to it? Well, we'll just do something really simple. <laughs> and we'll come in here and we'll say, let's attenuate that signal, right? So I'm going to put an attenuation in there. I'm going to say, let's drop the left channel a little bit. Now, meanwhile, let's hook up the right channel straight across and not do anything to that. So this gives me independent control over my left signal versus my right signal. Or I could do something really fun and say, no, 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 let's, uh, let's double click. Well, actually, let's do it this way. We'll just connect from here to the mid. Hey, stop that. It's because I'm not connected on that other side. Let's put this up here. Let's drag the mid. Hey, the mid into that and the mid out of that. And then this time, instead of running the right across, we're going to run the sides straight across. And so what this would let me do is say, leave my sides alone but let me attenuate the signal in the mid, okay? Or vice versa. I could attach this into this line instead and let my mid signal come through nice and clear, but play games with my side signal. So like, for example, I could put a filter on the side signal and do a high pass, which is a very common thing for mono compatibility. And we'll just, you know, roll off 
do a low cut at about 120 hertz so that my side signal doesn't have much in the sub range in it. Very, very common technique. So these are really useful devices for playing games with your mid and side, your left or right, and that pretty much covers it for all of the basic mix devices. Like I said in a, a future video after I've explained some of the data and logic testing stuff, we'll get into what these do. So thanks for hanging with me. I'm gonna keep banging these out. And um, if you wanna make sure you stay on top of every new video as it comes out, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel and also click the little notification bell and that way you'll know as soon as I've released a new one. Thank you very much.